Hello and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. Today's video is a continuation video of our agency Black Rain Ordnance machine guns. These are issued with Black Rain Ordnance sound suppressors. As you can see here, one of them are loose. This one's the one that we have not done the upgrade, and that's what this video is about. Upgrading these from this to this. In the previous video, we brought them up to shooting condition, showed all the issues we saw with them. And this one's going to show the changes from old to new or basic to improved. When we were doing the final testing on this, one of the suppressors decided to come apart. The back end stayed on the gun and the front end became really loose. Thankfully, we weren't doing high rate of fire magazine dumps. And of course, because this has a, um, a rail that covers part of the suppressor, we had to remove the rail. And there's the back end of the suppressor. So these things aren't tight. I went and checked the other rail and found that the front cap wasn't super tight. We tightened it back down. So we're going to do all the testing with this one suppressor and go from there. But these rails originally were not going to be replaced. After the sheriff from the agency that sent these saw the video and we started talking some more, he decided that he wanted to put a more sturdy rail on them. So he opted for the Sons of Liberty Gunworks M89 rails. These things are pretty bomb proof. Has a really stout barrel mounting system. Really beefy bolts right here. If you install these right, they're not going to shoot loose. One of the things that I had discovered after talking to some other people is that, and there's actually some videos with this too, that Black Rain um, supposedly uses just a power tool to install these, like a cordless drill. So there's no torque spec to the screws on these, and that's why the one in the previous video shot loose. And when you have a gun, whether it's for law enforcement purposes or self-defense purposes, and you're going to mount something like a laser designator or a flashlight, anything that you want to point where you want the bullets to go, you want it to stay solid. So we had to change these out if we were going to maintain rugged, reliable guns. So this was part of the upgrade, upgrade plan. So this suppressor will not be used in this video. We're going to put it back together after the video. But uh, that one's done. We did loosen it and just put it back on there as we found it. But we're going to test with just one suppressor and no handguard. One of the benefits about having this rail right here is that if this was to happen on these guns as they're set up now, they have full access to all of the suppressor. One of the other downsides about a telescoping rail is that if it goes over a sound suppressor, the heat rapidly transfers to that rail, makes an uncomfortable hold. And if not, it can affect point of aim, point of impact with the laser designator. So not really optimal. A lot of people like the look, but it's really not, not an upgrade. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the changes we made to go from this to this. And then we're going to test both guns, both uh, unsuppressed and suppressed, so you can see the changes in them. So let's put this one off to the side. And we'll go from front to back. So obviously we took the rail off. This is the other rails. We have more for the additional guns that are coming. So these are the 10.5 inch, I believe. I can't remember, but Sons of Liberty rail. Here is the barrel nut. Really beefy. Going underneath of the rail, we replaced the gas block with a Sons of Liberty. Fits very efficiently to the barrel and to the gas tube. And when it came to the gas tube, we installed Black River Tactical restricted gas tubes. These are called Easy Tune gas tubes. What they do is they take the hole that's normally here, which is large, and they undersize it. So instead of us having to replace the barrels, this is a more cost-effective measure. These aren't cheap gas tubes, but they do remove the necessity to change the barrel, assuming everything else in the barrel is still good. So BRT gas tube. From there back, we get into the receivers and bolt carrier group. So we put, originally... We upgraded the springs on the old Black Rain Ordnance, the ejector and extractor with a spring co, and we put new spring co gas rings on it. After talking to the sheriff, he decided that he didn't trust these 9310 bolts and these needed to die. One of the bolts was already stretching, so we opted to put brand new Sons of Liberty bolts in them. 
These already have Springco ejector and extractor springs, and they have new gas rings. So I took the Springco springs back out of these, and that took some money off of their bill. So they'll have new Carpenter 158 bolts that are high pressure tested, magnetic particle inspected. On the bolt carrier, we replaced the carrier key and we installed two new Michigan's OX screws, properly decked them, sealed them, torqued them, and staked them. In the fire control group, we put a new hammer spring. The old one is here. You see how much uh, bend it has in it that gives you a lighter hammer strike or slower velocity. And we put new pins in it as well because these older pins, one of the issues they were having with the strong uh, buffer system was in the, the original guns and uh, the over gas guns, they were breaking these pins. So just to get ahead of things and make sure these weren't damaged, we put new hammer and trigger pins in. Going from there, they wanted the trigger guards replaced. Here's the original GI style. These can swing down, but this agency is up uh, up north and it gets cold, so officers may have gloves. They decided to go with the enhanced trigger guard. So we pulled that out and replaced it. And then on the back end of the gun, we put a Sons of Liberty A5 style receiver extension or buffer tube, an A5 style buffer. This is a Mark II, which is equivalent to a Viltor A5 H2. These have a biasing spring in them, so the upgrade on these was reduced carrier bounce. And then, of course, we put Springco uh, rifle length green spring in here. Very long service life. The previous spring in here was a Springco already, but it was way too heavy. This is two times the power of a typical military spring or GI spring. And it was just too much. It was hammering on the gun. The buffer really wasn't bad, but it's not compatible with the A5 system. So we had to change the tube and the buffer. One of the benefits about the A5 system, especially on a machine gun, is the biasing spring in this thing reduces carrier bounce. So on a machine gun, if the carrier comes home, the speed, it can bounce out of battery. And when the hammer's falling, you get a click and no bang because the carrier bounced. So this is definitely an upgrade on a machine gun. Even on a semi-auto, they can be an upgrade. We put forward controls castle nut and a BCM style end plate on them. So I'll pull the bolt carrier out so you can see the installation and staking. There's the carrier key and the screws. That's our staking with our dimpling jig. I did replace the cam pin. And I put a dimple in the replacement one. I prefer not to use old cam pins when I'm replacing the bolt, so just one of the things that I do. And then we also replace the um, firing pin retaining pin with a new one because it was getting hammered. When the carrier velocity is high, these tend to take damage. So again, more of a preventative type thing. And then the same thing with the buffer retainer. Since the buffer spring was so heavy and uh, it was breaking parts due to the harsh recoil, we wanted to just make sure anything that could potentially fail is out of the guns. And then, of course, we replaced all the springs in the gun with spiral pins. These are the original um, split pins. People, recall them. People call them roll pins, but they're split pins. But you can see one here. We put one where the forward assist is. We put one for the ejector and uh, trigger guard, uh, gas tube. There's five total that we put in. Oh, bolt catch as well. So what we're going to do is get this back together. We're going to test fire it. Before we do, I want to see if we can uh, get in here so you guys can see the feed ramp work we did. We did some other stuff. We blueprinted the guns. Let me see if I can get in here. We staked the castle nut in three places. It's not necessary to stake in three places. One, two, and three. But we do it because we can. Um, the feed ramp's here. I'm going to try to allow this to see if Donna can get in here, but they look like mirrors. Smooth feed ramps feed better. They cause more consistency on the ammunition, which can lead to greater consistency on target. And they just look better. What's not to like about them? As you can see, the rail is shorter than the original ones. So it gives us a little bit of a gap between the front of the rail and the suppressor. 
These were non-adjustable gas blocks, unlike the previous ones that were installed. We did keep the factory charging handle. Some people have argued in the previous videos that this was a big waste. I think overall we have about $700 in the replacements of these guns. I did them a big break on labor because I wanted to give you all a good video on what we look for when we're working on a gun or building a gun. So uh, we hope that it was a good bit of education watching these previous videos and maybe a little bit here. But when you ask why is it worth it, the department is only authorized to spend so much. They already spent a lot on these guns initially due to someone previously with the department who really probably should have made a different choice. Um, but that being said, we're trying to fix this and we're going to give these officers nice solid guns. And uh, let's get to the testing. So let me put this back together. We're going to test the old gun first without a suppressor. And then we're going to test it with a suppressor. And then we'll go to the new gun here and test it without a suppressor and with a suppressor. One thing that I skipped over was the back of the carrier. The original carrier is um, pretty rough in a couple spots, so we did a deburring of that because if you look at the old buffer, it's pretty tore up. This will not cause any uh, reliability issues or function issues with the gun, but when you have a, a nice buffer system like the Viltor, the Sons of Liberty, or the BCM. It'd be nice not to have this all tore up. So we put a new uh, a new finish on the back of the carry to minimize that. I don't recommend doing this on every gun because if your carries are already on the short length, this can exacerbate the problem of your buffer retainer striking your buffer. So don't just change things for the sake of changing it. You need to really understand what's going on before you make changes to the gun. So we're going to pause the video. We're going to get these things set up over at the trap, and we'll come right back to you. All right, everyone, we're back at the trap here. I'm going to lock the bolt open. We have five rounds of ammunition, no suppressor. Suppressor's up here that we're going to test it with. I'm going to move it off to the side so it doesn't fall. We're going to do five rounds. We're going to see where the ejection pattern is. We're going to do this testing on full auto. Went about 3 o'clock-ish. Some of them went even further forward at about 2 o'clock. We did get proper bolt lock. Pretty violent, pretty fast. I'm going to put the suppressor on now. I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rounds suppressed. All right, back over to the trap. We're still on full auto. That's fire. Everything extremely forward and very fast. We did get proper bolt lock. Pull the can off. Anymore, I would have had to use a silicone rag because it would have started burning stuff. So we have function on the one that we did the initial rebuild to, but it's still not right. I'm going to load up the second mag right now. Let's go ahead. We have the bolt lock back. 
We have five rounds in this first round, uh, magazine. We're going to fire this full auto, unsuppressed. Let's see what we get. The previous gun unsuppressed was basically about three, about two thirty to three o'clock, and then with the suppressor, it was way forward. Let's see what this one does with the restricted tube and the Viltor slash Sons of Liberty A5 style buffer system. Test fire. No failure to cycle. So what we're going to do here is we're going to lighten the buffer weight. We're going to lighten the spring and see what this gun prefers without a suppressor. We're going to go to a Viltor 8-0. Actually, let's go to a one. Let's not go down too much. We might have too much buffer spring. The spring codes are about 5% extra power when it comes to a standard rifle spring. Let's put a couple more rounds in this. Let me get them. A little bit more in there, but doesn't matter. Let's see what we can get. Back over to the trap. We're still on full auto again. Let's see what we get stepping it down one weight and buffer. Full auto, test fire. We've got proper bolt lock. So, based on the gas tube restricted size that we used. We had to go down one weight and buffer weight. Let's do it one more time just to be sure. And you can hear that it was much slower and it ejected right about here. Let's fire again, full auto. And we have proper bolt lock. I'm showering my wife with hot brass. Hopefully she doesn't get hurt. And for luck, let's just do it one more time. Who doesn't have fun shooting machine guns? All right. Look at it smoking. Again, oh, we had a failure there, so it's good that we tested it. Let's go down one more weight. Actually, let's leave that weight alone. Let's go with a lighter spring. We're going to put a standard rifle spring in these. We're going to go back to the T2. Let me grab some more ammo. All 
I don't know where my stripper clip guide is, so we're just gonna load them in by hand. And let's test it again. All right, we have our original buffer back in it. And we have a factory rifle spring in here. See what it does. We have about four o'clock ejection and we have proper bolt lock. I'm gonna do another mag just to be sure. All right. That's fire. We have bolt lock. So I'm pretty happy with this. So what does this mean? That was the initial testing we did. This means that sometimes this is not a shot at my friend Alan. These types of springs aren't the right ingredient for your recipe. Each change you make to this gun changes the way that it performs. So if your ammo isn't hot enough to push through a heavier buffer or spring, you'll get exactly what we saw here. Let's go ahead and add the suppressor and see what happens. I'm gonna put some more ammo in there too. Come on. Next time I'll have a triple clip guide going. Ready? So these were going forward as well. Gun is shooting slower than the previous one. Not a whole lot slower. We do have bolt lock. So with this heavier buffer system, unsuppressed, we're right around here. Suppressed, we're right around here. Previous setup, unsuppressed, we're right about here. And then suppressed, we're about an hour further forward with the can. The gun feels more controllable with this buffer system in it and with this gas tube in it. So we're gonna call this a win. We're gonna set up all these guns the same way. So this is gonna be the last video we do on these particular Black Rain guns. Really happy with the result. We've got smoke everywhere back behind the trap. This is what happens when you do a lot of machine gun test firing. Come over to the bench. And again, some will consider this a waste of money. They think we should just replace the guns, but you wouldn't be getting this uh, video if we were gonna do that. And it was a lot cheaper to upgrade these than it was to replace them. So here is the possible fix. If you wanted to stay with this spring, and the buffer that we initially assume was going to be the right fix for this, we have to open up the BRT gas port right here from 071 to probably 073, which is what we're going to do if the sheriff agrees to this change. Otherwise, we keep the H2 buffer and we put a standard spring in here like it's set up now. The downside is the standard springs don't quite last as long. These have a half a million round service life, roughly, depending on conditions, if you don't let them corrode 
where the standard rifle spring can go as little as 3,000 rounds, but much longer if you take care of it, nowhere near what the spring co can do. So there's a couple other tweaks we'll do after the video is shot. Could be the buffers, could be the springs, could be the gas port, but this is the overall win that we were looking for. As always, I hope you found this video educational, and thanks for watching.